Welcome to Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. And here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall have the MRT7 construction progress. Our road safety reminder on the Young Street Smarts portion centers on what to do when one encounters a broken white center line road marking. This week's buying to bear shall be about loading and unloading traffic rules. The public service segment shall have QC Barangay employees' thoughts on the demolishment of their hall. Showcase this week shall have the compact SUV from Toyota, the 2019 RAV4 2.5 LTD. Waffle Race Weekend will have the highlights of the 2019 Super Sprint Series Round 1 held at the Ascenda Designer Outlet. All of these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management are on this week's edition of Motor In Today. Join us! Ah, the things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all new Vios. My Vios, my drive. Calling all automobile enthusiasts. Autofocus.com.ph is exclusive to the automobile where you'll find reviews on the latest brand new car models, together with their head to head comparisons. It has the detailed specs of car models available in the country and their latest SRPs and special promos. Together with the latest auto industry news and developments like car launches and test drives. Autofocus.com.ph is all about automobiles. Click on! Be part of the 2019-2020 Autofocus People's Choice Awards only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA 2019. Then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2019-2020 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2019. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards will win. You choose, you decide. Vote now. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Here are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. The government's transport department was present at the recent 7th Transport and Logistics Philippines to share insights on the current state of the transport system. The 7th Transport and Logistics Philippines was recently held at the World Trade Center in Pasay City. The event seeks to advance the logistics industry through exchange of ideas and showcasing of world-class technology and services. As a keynote speaker during the event, DOTR Undersecretary for Road Transport and Infrastructure, Mark De Leon, highlighted the efforts of the department to fulfill its commitment to provide seamless connectivity among road networks. Transportation greatly influences the flow and performance of logistics. It is to no surprise 
that uh, we, the Department of Transportation, uh, fully and truly understands the critical, critical role of the sector. Specifically, transportation infrastructure, the development of transportation infrastructure for the overall efficiency of the economy of our country. Under Secretary De Leon also discussed the DOTR initiatives in the sectors of road transport, maritime, aviation, and railway. The DOTR Undersecretary assures the public that they are working hard towards the success of the Build, Build, Build program in the country. Meanwhile, the clearing operations initiatives by the MMDA continue to clear roads and alternate routes from obstruction. On top of that, the agency was joined by the local government of Quezon City, DILG, and PNP in the demolition of illegal structures in the said city. The Barangay the Mayang Lagi Hall along E. Rodriguez Street and the Office of the District Traffic Enforcement Unit Traffic Sector 1 along A. Bonifacio, corner Cloverleaf Bridge, Balintawak, and Quezon City were both identified as road obstructions by the MMDA. The said demolition is in line with the 60-day deadline given to Metro Manila mayors to reclaim public roads in order to ease traffic congestion in the Metro. MMDA Chairman Danilo Lim stressed that with their collective efforts, they are confident that they will reach the target. Buong Metro Manila ngayon, lahat ng mga local chief executive natin, mga LGUs, gumagalaw. Nandyan yung uh, DILG natin na nakatutok. Meron siyang memorandum circular na pinalabas na mag-comply. Idagdag pa natin yung mga iba't ibang ahensya ng gobyerno na tumutulong din. So uh, talagang maganda yung uh, mga nangyayari ngayon. The official added that it is now the responsibility of the local authorities to maintain order in cleared areas. I have uh, been to most parts of Quezon City. All the barangay captains submit daily or weekly rather reports to me about their accomplishments. If you go around Quezon City now, you will see there's a big difference. Now the challenge is really just sustainability. The chairman also highlighted the importance of working hand-in-hand -hand with concerned national agencies and local government units in reclaiming obstructed roads in the area. Quezon City is the biggest city in Metro Manila and among those cities congested with obstructions, therefore contributing to traffic. The MMDA says this is why they are prioritizing the clearing operations on primary roads of the city. Continuing, the DOTR recently met with the officials of Toyota Motor Philippines Corporation to discuss the car company's contribution to the government's PUV modernization program. Apart from the goal to modernize the PUVs across the country, the PUV modernization program of the government aims to provide training, support, and employment opportunities to affected stakeholders. To make this happen, the DOTR aims to partner with the private sectors such as vehicle companies and manufacturers. Toyota also raised with the DOTR its plan to further expand the Tuper Scholar program with Tesla and other car manufacturers to provide development of training programs for drivers operators and their families affected by the PUV modernization program. According to Toyota Motor Philippines, the said meeting has been insightful and they're looking forward to championing the PUV modernization program. The DOTR has always commended the efforts of the private sectors in pushing through the PUV modernization program. And finally, the MMDA recently received 108 new reflectorized vests, which will be beneficial to enforcers, especially amidst the rainy season. The 108 new reflectorized vests were distributed to MMDA enforcers, with 88 of it going to the Special Task Force operations, and the other 20 for the EDSA Special Traffic and Transport Force. MMDA EDSA Traffic Chief Bong Nebrija expressed their gratefulness to Alvin Caranza as it will help the enforcers fulfill their task better, especially during the rainy days. The MMDA says the old vests will be surrendered to the agency and will be recycled and distributed to new traffic enforcers. Those are the latest news in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. Here's Ray Louie. Thanks, Susie. The DOTR and its concessionaires were the projects under the government's Build, Build, Build program toured the members of the media on the site in an effort to inform the public 
on the progress of the construction works. Entering into the second half of President Duterte's term, a series of media tours has been organized by the government to further check on the status of the administration's projects. Mahalaga po na itong puntong ito ay bisitahin natin kung nasaan na ba tayo, hindi lang po para kilalanin yung mga nagawa na, ngunit para magsilbi po siya na driver po sa atin na ipagpatuloy yung progress ng mga proyekto natin. Starting off, the team visited the site of the MRT-7 Station 2 located at the Quezon City Memorial Circle. Aside from it being a public-private partnership, the Transport Department would like to emphasize the way it is being implemented. Hindi na ito ay isang public-private partnership lamang dahil sa napakarami pong proyekto na pwede nating tawagin na public-private partnership. Pero ang gusto po sana namin i-highlight sa proyektong ito ay yung pamamaraan kung paano po natin tinapatupad, paano po natin i-implement ang proyektong ito. MRT-7 is a 23-kilometer rail line with 14 stations which traverses from Quezon City to Bulacan and is expected to reduce travel time to 34 minutes from 4 hours. It is seen to accommodate at least 500,000 passengers a day. Ang objective po kasi yung, yung mga bus na galing norte ay doon na lang pupunta sa San Jose del Monte and then ang mga passenger magpitrain na lang which is makikita natin mga 34 minutes lang. 500,000 ho yan, meaning to say 500,000 families, 500,000 companies, yung mga pinagtatrabaho nila, what side ho yun makikinabang dito sa, sa project na ito, oras matapos natin. Construction of stations, works on elevated, at grade and underground guideways, and foundation works for the new alignment are currently ongoing. San Miguel Corporation, the MRT-7 concessionaire, announced that 108 train cars, or equivalent to 36 train sets, are already 100% completed and are ready to be delivered in the Philippines from South Korea. Yun know, 36 namin natin na, na train na mag operate pag natapos yung project, ang configuration ho niyan, three cars, meaning tatlong kabit-kabit na, 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 na cars, na bagon. Partial operations are expected in the next two years. Para sa MRT-7, ang target natin na uh, partial operations will be end of 2021. Pero again, tulad nung sa lahat ng proyekto natin, continuous and incessant yung efforts natin together with our implementation partners to find ways to shorten and to speed up yung mga kailangan natin gawin para ma-achieve yung partial operations. That was the MRT-7 construction progress with insights from USEC TJ Batan and Engineer Norberto Conti, our guest this week on Motoring Today's Motoring Forum, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. Ah, the things that make my day. My mini-me, my kind of jam, My passion, my blend of coffee, my inspiration. That's all good with the all-new Vios. My Vios, my drive. Ako po si Michael Kaliwag, labing dalawang taon ng patrol crew para sa Enlex Esitex. Bilang patrol crew, handa kong marap sa anumang di nasa ang sitwasyon. Naalala ko pa noon, 2009, Bagyong Ondoy. Papatrol kami sa index nang may nakita kami isang pamilya na natrap sa bubong. Kahit kailangan magpatrol, nagdesisyon kami na sagatin at iligtas sila. Kami ang index SETEX Patrol Crew. Kaagapay at katuwag nyo sa mas maayos na paglalakbay.
with us here on Motoring Today. We now have this week's valuable motoring tips, starting off with some road safety reminders from Toyota. Katulad ng pinapakita sa animation, broken white center lines separate the movement of traffic on multi-lane roads. Ang ibig sabihin nito ay bawal kang dumaan sa gitna o sa mismong linya. But if you're crossing it to overtake or to change lanes, then just keep in mind na ang mga sasakyan na nasa kabilang lane ay may right of way. So, wait for your turn. More motoring tips for you here on Motoring Today. Proper driver's demeanor while behind the wheel from Mitsubishi. Payong chopper lang, kaibigan. Ako po si Jake. Isang kapwa niyo chopper. Loading and unloading ng mga pasero sa tamang lugar lamang gawin. May tamang lugar para magbaba at magsakay ng pasahero. Kaya doon ihinto ang iyong sasakyan. Iwasan makaabala sa ibang motorista, kaya itabi mo ang sasakyan mo. Huwag sa gitna ng daan pumarada. Huwag ka nang dumagdag sa problema natin sa kalsada. Matuto kang sumunod sa batas trapiko. Kung ayaw mong maabala, huwag ka ring mga abala. Makisama ka, kaya't huwag basta humarang sa kalsada. Ito po si Jay Gonzalez, payong chopper lang, kaibigan, mula sa isang kapwa niyo, chopper. Every time I'm on the road, I can also expect high performance from Phoenix Fuels. We made it! Now with Pulse Technology, delivers enhanced power and acceleration to make every trip come alive. Every time I'm on the road, I can also expect high performance from Phoenix Fuels. We made it! Now with Pulse Technology, delivers enhanced power and acceleration to make every trip come alive. The Tactical Survival in Arms Expo is back on another leg with a more intensive take on the global issues on environment, economic uncertainty, security threats, and the like. Visitors may avail of the free seminar during the event. The Visayas leg of the expo will take place on September 5 to 8 at the Cebu Trade Hall, third level of SM City Cebu. Admission is free. You can pre-register online by logging on to the Tax Expo site. See you at the Cebu leg of the 2019 Tactical Survival and Arms Expo. Be part of the 2019-2020 Autofocus People's Choice Awards only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA 2019. Then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2019-2020 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2019. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards will win. You choose, you decide. Vote now. Ah, the things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all-new Vios. My Vios, my drive. Continuing, we now welcome you to Motoring Today's World of Motorsports. We start with the latest news and developments. The inaugural round of the Super Sprint Series. The latest in grassroots motorsports events for newbies to test their driving skills in timed runs around a temporary race course was held at a sprawling parking lot of the Hacienda Designer Outlet in Silang, Cavite and drew a mix of true amateurs competing for the first time in an organized motorsport event and a few entries with moderate experience in grassroots slalom and autocross events. Competition is divided into classes defined by car engine size, designated by numbers 1, 2 and 3, level of modification and upgrades, street super street and prep level of driver experience, amateur and intermediate. The top drivers in the first super sprint round include Tristan Erickson Suante, who set the best time of 48.118 seconds in the street category. Kyle Enriquez was named the best amateur driver with a time of 45.219.
he was also the best in the street mod super street category with a time of 45.219. Froyan Bakungan Jr. named best intermediate driver with a time of 46.107. Cody Nang, who recorded the best time of 42.808, was the best driver of the round while driving in the prep category. After a long wait, the 2019 Vios Racing Festival will resume at the Clark International Speedway with a second leg of the Vios Circuit Championship and a third leg of the Vios Autocross Challenge on August 30 and 31. Veteran racers and newcomers including the first leg race winners should be racing to resume wheel-to-wheel -wheel battles for podium finishes in respective sporting, promotional, and celebrity classes of the Vios Circuit Championship. Also expected to be eager to pit their precision driving skills against others are Vios Car Club members, media motorheads, and so-called influencers in the third leg of the Vios Autocross Challenge. Fans, friends, and families of the racers are expected to crowd the Clark for a fun-filled two days of exciting races as well as off-track activities and exhibits that Toyota Motor Philippines has prepared for everyone who will come to enjoy the Vios Racing Festival. More on the world of motorsports here on Motoring Today as we now give you Race Weekend. A brand new grassroots racing series has gotten off to a great start. It's called the Super Sprint Series and caters mainly to the true amateurs, racer wannabes looking to get their first taste of organized motorsports competitions. We're back at the Ascenda Designer Outlet in Silanca Vite for another motorsports event, another parking lot time trial competition. Drivers and cars line up for their turn going through a course marked out by pylons and cones. The whole vibe, the sounds, the throaty growl of idling engines, the roar of revving engines, the squeal of tires braking or turning at the limit of grip, the PA announcer calling out driver end times. It's like most of the parking lot championship, autocross, slaloms now in the final rounds of competition. But on this particular race weekend, the Ascenda is hosting a brand new event, the first ever round of Super Sprint Series. The newest grassroots motorsports event aims to provide an accessible and pressure-free venue for members of all the clubs to race in a safe, controlled environment. We created Super Sprint because of our club, primarily because of our club, Grupo Toyota. We want to entice more racers, more people to join us in racing para hindi sila mahiya, it's accessible for them. And then, kasama na namin sila sa mga ibang series na sinasalihan namin. While Super Sprint envisions itself as a home of true amateurs, a starting point for those wanting to find out if racing is truly for them, it does allow for intermediate drivers, those with some experience competing in other grassroots motorsports events. Basically, there are four classifications for competition, from street which is strictly for amateurs, to street modified, super street, and prep. Super Sprint regulations define the levels of modifications and or vehicle models allowed for entering each classification. Cars are also classed according to engine size. Class 1 for vehicles with engines 1.3 liters and below, 2 for 1.6 liters and below, and 3 for those above 1.6 liters. We accept stock cars and people with no experience at all. Just as long as you have a 3-point seat belt and a helmet and that you're willing to learn and that you're safe. During the inaugural round of the Super Sprint, the course layout was obviously not quite as complex or technically challenging as laid out in slalom or autocross events. Our layout is be, it's simple, but then kailangan maging smooth talaga. Hindi pwedeng manggigil sa preno, hindi rin pwedeng manggigil habang lumiliko, pag understeer ka, hindi ka liliko. Hindi ka, hindi ka makakuha ng magandang oras. The debut round drew a good number of entries, 80% of whom were true amateurs or real first-timers with no zero experience in organized racing. Organizers happily noted, it drew a sprinkling of drivers with intermediate experience in motor racing. Many of the more experienced drivers understood their role in a series meant more for the true amateurs. 
It's a good thing dito sa Super Space kasi mix eh. Uh, uh, we were invited also or we were allowed by the organizer na to run this kahit na for beginners siya. Kasi somehow, makikita ng beginners kung anong difference ng somehow may experience, di ba? So, they can ask kung for the tips, kung anong pwede namin i-share. Di naman kung may madamot sa ganyan. So, for the better good of the drivers, yan ang gusto natin mangyari. Among those who showed up for the inaugural Super Sprint round is Lester Shi, who found the event both accessible and affordable. It's a great event today. Uh, we are, we're holding it in Ashenda. The Super Sprint Series, it's open to amateur drivers, drivers who have no experience in racing. It's an easy setup. You don't, do, you don't need to spend a lot of money to set up your car, unlike in circuit. Uh, you need to spend a little bit more. Also, it's an open event, meaning that any car can join. You don't have to be particular with the horsepower, with the suspension, or any setup. Autocross Super Sprint is the best venue to start racing. Also at the first round was Cody Lang, who's among the young guns making a name for themselves in local grassroots racing. This event, ato, um, it's for newbies. Kasi, and Pwede rin siya for newbies and pwede for pros, mga may experience. Pero the layout kasi, pang newbie lang talaga. So for the newbies, okay tong super sprint as a parang start, di ba? Para may experience muna ng ganitong course bago pumunta dun sa mga parang mga autocross, ganyan. Kasi mas ma ano yung track eh, parang mas masikip, mas mahirap. So itong super sprint, kaya ito ginawa for the newbies talaga. Para matutunan nilang paano i-maximize yung car nila, car controls, gano'n. After an auspicious start to a fledging grassroots motorsports event, those who were there already looking forward to the next round. Maganda yung naging layout dito nila dito of the organizers. So, sana ganito ulit and I hope mas marami mag-join. Our next round will be on October 6, I think. It will be in Marikina. You can check out our Facebook page. It's uh, Search Super Sprint and then we'll post the details there. It may be late in this year's motorsport season, but the debut of another brand new series that aims to encourage the true amateurs to try their hands at organized, safe and, yes, legal racing should certainly be a welcome development. That's this week's World of Motorsports. Motoring Today continues right after this break. The things that make my day. My mini me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all new Vios. My Vios. My drive. Be part of the 2019-2020 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA2019. Then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2019-2020 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2019. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards will win. You choose, you decide. Vote now. NLEX Viaje Tips presents Healthy Road Trip. It's time for that much-awaited vacation, but here are a few things to watch out for. Sitting for long periods of time can form blood clots in your body like in the legs. To avoid that, stop for a quick break. Get up and move around to get your blood pumping. Car air conditioners speed up dehydration, so make sure to drink water frequently. Lastly, while driving, protect your eyes from the sun by wearing UV-blocking sunglasses. 
And for a smoother trip up north, you can now drive all the way to your destination with one RFID. Get your Easy Trip RFID sticker now. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Welcome back to Motoring Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. Isuzu Philippines continues with its Fuel Eco Challenge Series this 2019. This time, various Isuzu car clubs take center stage. The first leg of the car club's edition took place at the IPC plant in Laguna, where 12 participating members of the MUX Owners Philippines compete among each other to gain the most mileage from the Isuzu MUX RZ4e and DMAX RZ4e in a 4.2km course around the IPC headquarters, the same route taken by last year's finalists. Today is the second leg of the 2019 Isuzu Fuel Eco Challenge Isuzu Club Edition. We have gathered here in our assembly plant with the representatives coming from the Team Filipinas to experience first-hand our RZ4e model's capacity to perform under low fuel consumption. The champion for each model brought home a 7,500 peso fuel voucher and Isuzu trolley bag, while the rest get 1,000 pesos worth of fuel vouchers and Isuzu premium items. The 2019 Isuzu Fuel Eco Challenge Car Club Edition is Isuzu's way of promoting and advocating fuel-efficient driving among existing Isuzu vehicle owners and eventual Isuzu vehicle buyers. We have made this Isuzu Fuel Eco Challenge as part of our advocacy in promoting fuel efficiency driving which is necessary today. Burmaz Auto Philippines, the official distributor of Mazda vehicles in the country, has officially unveiled five new variants of the all-new Mazda 3. Tonight we just launched the all-new Mazda 3 in the Philippines. This is actually the first model of the seventh generation for Mazda Motor Corporation. So in this new vehicle, we're actually elevating the status of the brand Mazda and also of the nameplate, the Mazda 3, you know, to more premium status compared to the rest. The elite range of the four-door sedan and five-door sportback variants of the all-new Mazda 3 comes with a fuel-efficient 1.5-liter Sky Active G engine. Meanwhile, the premium trims are equipped with a powerful 2.0-liter engine along with additional safety and comfort features. We also have the driving dynamics and this is represented by the Skyactiv architecture wherein we improve different components of the car, the seats, the tires, the chassis, all of them work in harmony to make the driving experience more pleasurable. And finally, technology. The technology in the Mazda 3 is all really up there and especially with safety. We have Mazda radar cruise control, we also have smart city brake systems. All of these new technologies contribute to making driver more pleasurable experience for everyone. You will see a lot of premium features, especially from the low variant all the way up to the top end. So for the all new Mazda 3, LED headlamps come standard, GVC Plus for added exciting driving dynamics and more comfortable ride. We also have a standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay for uh, added entertainment for the user. We also have the adaptive driving display, a standard 7-inch cluster meter. And actually, words are not going to be enough to express it. It's better that actually the public come and see 
and experience the all-new Mazda 3. According to Burmaz Auto Philippines, the arrival of the all-new Mazda 3 signifies the new era of Mazda Premium, which elevates the nameplate's exceptional driving experience through its design, craftsmanship, engineering, and safety. Volkswagen Philippines, in partnership with the Leica Auto Group, recently inaugurated the Volkswagen Santa Rosa dealership situated along Santa Rosa Tagaytay Road. This is the grand opening of Volkswagen Santa Rosa, which is the only dealer of Volkswagen in Laguna at the moment, although our group is supposed to open a few more. Uh, right now, it's the leading uh, Volkswagen dealer here in our area and welcoming all people from this area to visit a autoplex of car brands here in Santa Rosa Autoplex. I think there's something like 10 car brands in one place with a giant parking lot. So it's like an auto mall and Volkswagen is right in the middle. As the company's eighth dealership in the country, the Volkswagen Santa Rosa dealership comes down in history as the first one from the brand established in Southern Luzon. According to Volkswagen Philippines, it targets mainly the upwardly mobile markets of the Calabarzon area, which records a significant increase in its economic growth within the vehicle buying age demographic of 20 years old and above. This dealership is a full dealership, so it will offer all our products in terms of the vehicles that we have available. It will also offer accessories and other related items. And of course, for people who do decide to purchase a Volkswagen, they can be confident that the service will also be available. So they can bring their cars for servicing here. And we expect that really they'll only be visiting this dealership once a year because we're once a year PMS lang, no? For its part, Leica Auto Group says that Volkswagen Santa Rosa will pave the way for their stronger presence in the Calabarzon area. The Volkswagen Santa Rosa dealership would showcase and offer Volkswagen full product roster, the Santana, Santana GTS, La Vida, and La Mando. The showroom is a large showroom, world-class facility. We have uh, enough display facilities for the full model lineup. I think you can see eight cars in this showroom. Of course, it also has a full lineup of parts and service and even body shop. So everything you need, we can handle here in uh, Volkswagen Santa Rosa. Our Car of the Week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. The all-new Toyota RAV4 has made a major comeback since it was first launched in the country 25 years ago. With a powerful engine performance, matched with a refreshed design and styling, it has quickly made waves following its unveiling. Find out what makes it special in this week's Showcase.
That was the 2019 Toyota RAV4 2.5 LTD, the company's compact SUV that surely made its comeback worth the wait. Our featured vehicle in this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry-free with Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantees Auto Insurance Program, 100% worry-free driving. The things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all-new Vios. My Vios. My drive. Be part of the 2019-2020 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA2019. Then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2019-2020 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2019. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards will win. You choose, you decide. Vote now. On the final stretch of motoring today, we have our public service segment brought to you by Honda Cars Philippines. As the 60-day limit of the DILG to Metro Mayors on reclaiming roads comes near, the MMDA, the LGUs, and other government agencies continue to clear roads of obstructions. The most recent one is in Quezon City. The MMDA has identified the Barangay Hall of the Mayang Lagi along E. Rodriguez Street as an obstruction and was therefore demolished by the authority. Chairman Renato Tanyag of the said Barangay seems positive about this move even though they're used to having the hall, which has been existing for two decades already. Yung una malungkot eh. Pero tapos nun, masaya na dahil bibigyan na kami ng magandang uh, barangay hall ni Mayor. Mga more than 20 years na yan eh. Kasi yan eh, second term ko pa lang. Eh, may mga ano na sa akin, dumating na mga notice na gigibay na talaga yan. Kaya matagal-tagal na rin. Eh, utos ng presidente kaya wala magawa si Ma'am Joy kung hindi sumunod lang. Kakaganda naman ang kalsada yun. Following the demolition, a temporary barangay hall was set up in the sidewalk. The barangay chairman admits that it will affect barangay works and will be a challenge on their part. Malaking apekto. Kasi, eh, pre, 
Wala pa yan, wala pang ilaw, wala pang telepono, papano mga computer natin. Kaya lumipat muna kami doon sa sidewalk, doon muna kami mag-office. Ano, mag We also asked the barangay employees who seemed unhappy with the demolition. Quezon City is the biggest metro city, but Mayor Joy Belmonte says she's not pressured on the 60-day deadline. We will continue to follow this story and what the barangay and the city have agreed on. That's our public service segment from Hot Cars Philippines. And may we remind you once again that if you come across any motoring issue or problem that you deem as unsafe or inimical to the general motoring public which you would like us to highlight on this portion or to refer to proper authorities for appropriate action, please feel free to let us know about it. Take a look at your screens for our contact details. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now in its 33rd year of continuing service to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of Butch Gamboa, our dad, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.